Ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, ladies and gents, I know you guys have heard about Al B. Shore. You've heard of Al B. Shore? I've heard of Al B. Shore. He's gonna... I wanna be on my own, girl. I wanna be on my own. I wanna be on my own, girl, 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 girl. Ladies and gentlemen, Al B. Shore got his name from Dana Dane. How did he get his name from Dana Dane? Well, Dana Dane did a song, Nightmares of the Night. Nightmares, nightmares. It all right? Nightmares is just my imagination or reality. Remember when he said, I was this ugly creature? And she said, I have to hear one more before I'll be sure. Okay, that's where I'll be sure I got his name from. Just in case you didn't know, let's play it, all right? I'll be sure. sure. Ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, ladies and gents, I promise you, you're gonna love this. You thought I was gonna say you're gonna dig this, huh? No, 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 no. We're not oh, yeah. digging. Ladies, ladies, gentlemen, ladies, I'll be sure. And he's on his own. He wants to be on his own. Ladies and gentlemen, I'll be sure is going to be playing in our background, and so are so many other people. But we can't play certain songs because they have words in the songs that I can't play on my radio. But we're going to do I'll be sure, and we're going to come and cut to some love and happiness with some Al Green. And then we're going to cut to, you know, there he is right there. Love and happiness. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, I told people how to use money the right way how to get federal reserve notes I showed you the code you guys have all seen the code 12 USC 412 that is the trading with the enemy act that is the emergency bank and relief act of March 9, 1933 as amended the way we know that the act is still in play is because it's at 12 USC 411 through 419 don't worry about all the other codes attached to it and all that. The, the code is not the law, ladies and gentlemen. The reason why Title 12 is not positive law, because there's a lot of words in Title 12, that ain't in the original code. That ain't in the original act. They can't do it. Ladies and gentlemen, it's only positive law if it matches. But I want you all to pay attention. Because I think you guys are going to get this. Now, see, I like this right here. Conservators appointed pursuant to the provisions of this title shall be subject to the provisions and the penalties prescribed under 5209 of the revised statute, United States Code, codified Title 12, Section 592, and Sections 112 through 117 of the Criminal Code, Title 18. Section 202 to 207. Let me help you guys out so that you know that codes are not law. They never were. Doesn't matter how much Congress points out this stuff within their junk. It is the statute at large that they claim is supposed to be the law. But we're going to get to our point. Because y'all got to understand something, because I know y'all don't get it. How many of you guys think that the United States came off with the gold standard in 1933? Good, no, no, just raise your hand. You can just, for for the sake of just the conversation, just, just raise your hand. Nobody else is looking at you. Raise your hand if you believe that we came off the gold standard in 1933. Anybody? Yeah, the, the, you guys, HR 192, everybody's always, HR 192, no more gold standard. Ladies and gentlemen, you guys are wrong. Go back and look at the section of the Constitution where they claim that Congress shall make as legal tender nothing but gold and silver. You guys know that, right? So Congress can only make as legal tender gold and silver. Anybody know when they stopped making legal tender in the form of gold or silver? Go ahead. Name a date. You'll be wrong. The United States has never stopped making legal tender in the form of gold and silver. We're going to go to Al Green, y'all. Come on, Al. Love and happiness. Love and happiness. Yeah. 
I don't know who this hoe is. Okay, she ain't supposed to be popping up on my screen. I, I don't I don't do that stuff, ladies and gentlemen. I don't, I don't play that junk. That's oh oh I will bet doing that? Well let me do that now. How you do that there? It won't be popping up again. I don't play that. Now I gotta find out where that junk is. Not the aisle bits, but the virus that's allowing that pop-up to come up because I don't have that on my computer. We don't play that junk. All right, ladies and gentlemen. For those of you who believe that the United States came off the gold standard in 1933 or any other year, let me prove it to you. First, we have to make sure you understand that we're talking about the New Deal. Yeah, they got rid of the old stuff. The old stuff was gold. They got rid of the gold. No, they didn't. That's what they wanted everybody to believe. Y'all y'all need to pay attention to what Congress' intent was. So let me... And notice he says, I shall fight it and do everything I can to defeat it. What is he trying to defeat? Anyone trying to take us off the gold standard. Let, let, let's... Uh, hey, hey, I never read it this way before, but let me go ahead and explain it this way. I want to know, so far as I'm concerned, that the bill represents the ideas of the new administration, the New Deal. Now, I should help carry it through if it is that. If, on the other hand, this bill has been proposed and written by some influences that are responsible for this financial situation, I will fight and do everything that I can to defeat it. Ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you how much they were not going to defeat it. Now, I want y'all to pay attention to me because you're going to learn something. I guarantee you. Ladies and gentlemen, it's almost 11 o'clock. I'm tired. I've been up since 5. Went to the doctor today. It was 5 hours round trip. Had two meetings. One with SACOM, one with Legion's new trainees. I'm tired. I was on my way to sleep and I said, no, 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 you got to... You got to explain to people what's going on. So I'm going to explain to you guys what's going on. But let's talk about gold. It is difficult. Oh, hey, Al. Al. I can't have you. No, you're going to be distracted. You know how much I, 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 like, I like love and happiness. I'm sorry. We go, we go that far back, ladies and gentlemen. It, it, it is difficult, under the circumstances, to discuss this bill. I mean, the first section of the bill, as I grasp it, is particularly the war powers given back in 1917. October 6, 1917, the Training with the Enemy Act. Well, with, with some slight amendments. The, the other gives supreme authority, supreme authority, to the Secretary of the Treasury of the United States to impound all the gold. Wait a minute. Well, they must give us just compensation, right? Because the treasure can only use it for public use and no one's property may be taken for public use without just compensation. That's the Fifth Amendment to the Constitution. Let's see if they violated the Constitution, shall we? Treasury of the United States to impound all the gold of the United States in the hands of individuals. Look, look at this. The third section deals with how the banks are to be handled under this authority. What authority? The Treasury taking control of finances under con Congress's authority to regulate commerce. How the bank assets are to be frozen. Ladies and gentlemen, bank assets are frozen. All banking activity has been made to cease. All normal banking activity has been made to cease. Just as simple. Still to this day, nothing has changed. No, 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 hold on. The last section of the bill provides for the issuance of a new money. A new money? A new money. What type of money? Gold. Gold? Man, ain't no issue no new money called gold. Really? Shall we read? Since I refer to section 401. Section 401, where is section? Where? Meet me. Section 401. He's referring to this. This paragraph right here. You see that highlighted stuff right there? That's what he's referring to. So let's go back and see what he's referring to so you guys can see about the new money. Because nobody pays attention to it. We're going to bring it to your attention. I refer to Section 401, which reads, 
upon deposit with the Treasury of the United States of all contract obligation in the United States or any notes, bills of exchange, bankers acceptance, draft, trade acceptances, and so forth, under the Federal Reserve Act, obligations that are deposited as security and gold, sorry, obligations that are deposited as gold for reserve notes are placed in the hands of the Federal Reserve agent. Now, hold on. Let's make sure you understand that Congress didn't get away from the gold standard. What they did is they redefined what gold was. There was no law prohibiting from doing that because Congress gave themselves, not the people, Congress gave themselves the authority to regulate commerce. Go ahead. Go take a look at who wrote that junk and see if it was the people who voted on it. Congress gave themselves the authority to regulate commerce. Remember, they have the authority to regulators mount up. They have the authority to regulate commerce. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> I just got finished explaining to the SACOM members what I'm about to explain to you so that you'll get what Congress did here. You ever heard of gold bullion? Have you ever heard of fool's gold? Have you ever heard of plated gold? Gold plate? Tit? Have you ever heard of fake gold? Man, there's all kind of things with the name gold attached to it. Just like we learned about Reserve Bank. It's under bank. And whether it's a federal bank, a district bank, a state bank, a membered bank, a national bank, it all falls under the definition of bank. Well, guess what? Congress got to regulate gold. It got to determine what type of gold would be acceptable. Remember, there are all kinds of golds. There are golden awards. There are golden cakes. There's a golden sunrise. I mean, there's, there's all kinds of gold. So Congress regulated a new kind of gold. It's a new money, and it is, according to Congress, it is to be security and gold for the Federal Reserve. No, remember, they've impounded the gold from the people, and what did they do? The Supreme Court told you. All the cases that went and said that they can't do that, they're not giving us the equivalent, and the Supreme Court said they gave the equivalent in fiat currency. Go, go and look at the cases, Perry versus U.S., that's one of them. Many of you know that case, talking about contracts and everything. Because it was all about the obligation of contracts. That's what HDR 192 is. So I want y'all to pay attention. Under the Federal Reserve Act, obligations that are deposited, Section 412 of Title 12, as security and gold, remember, it's collateral security. This is what they're talking about. Ladies and gentlemen, they didn't come off the gold standard. They just redefined what gold was. Wait, wait, let me prove it to you, okay? Security and gold for reserve notes are placed in the hands of the Federal Reserve agent. He says, I'd like to ask the chairman of the committee if this is a plan that changes the holding or backing of the security of the Federal Reserve notes in the Treasury of the United States rather than the Federal Reserve. So is the Treasury going to back the bills? And of course they are. That's why it's an obligation of the United States, ladies and gentlemen. Pay attention. Obligations. Obligations. Contractual obligations. Wait, let's read. Mr. Stegall. Glass Stegall. Could you please tell us what's going on? Uh, well, well, this provision is for the issuance of Federal Reserve Bank notes and not Federal Reserve notes. 1945, they changed that. These are circulating notes. Go ahead and read 411. These are circulating notes. They, they circulate amongst the Federal Reserve Banks. Ladies and gentlemen, you're a Federal Reserve Bank. That's why you use circulating notes. Go ahead and read it. Hold on. Let me show you Section 401. No, that's not it right there. It's right there. Let me show you Section 401. Upon deposit with the Treasury of the United States, of any direct obligation of the United States, of any notes, any Federal Reserve Bank making such a deposit in the manner prescribed by the Secretary of the Treasury shall be entitled to receive from the Comptroller of the Currency circulating notes in blank. Go read Section 411. It's no longer in blank. 
they took that away in 1945 and they made it Federal Reserve notes, which are circulating notes, to be used as advancements between the Federal Reserve banks and for no other purpose are they authorized. Pay attention, they're circulating notes. You are a reserve bank or a bank or a banking institution as defined in law i.e circulating notes <laughs> you get to use federal reserve notes i'm not making this up people i'm telling you exactly where you're finding it at congress told you what they were doing just nobody went back and read what they said hold on mr stiegel could you finish explaining oh yeah and the security backed of it are the obligation notes drafts bills of exchange and bankers' acceptances. Now, what are they talking about here? You guys don't understand? They're talking about the new money. And, and remember, the new money is security in gold. And Mr. Stiegel says, well, the security back of the Federal Reserve notes is the obligations, draft notes, bills of exchange, and bankers' acceptances. Ladies and gentlemen, that's the new gold. Let me explain. Under the Federal Reserve Act, obligations are deposited as the security and gold for the reserve notes. And they're deposited with the banks. I want all of you to pay attention. As a matter of fact, I'm telling you what minute it is. 16 minutes and 30 seconds. Have your mama, your brothers, your sisters, your uncles, your cousins. Listen at this point, because after this, I'm going to tell you why I'm giving you this information. And you're going to see nobody else has ever given you anything like that, but they done pissed me off. And I'm going to tell you why they done pissed me off in a second. I told them they keep with me and I'm going to keep revealing their secrets. Why? Because the God I serve is going to keep giving me their secrets. So let me give you one of those secrets. Got a telephone bill, a gas bill, a water bill, a light bill. You got a car note, a house note. Ladies and gentlemen, when you signed up for your cell phone bill, you did it over the telephone. Do yourself a favor. Get an application from the cell phone company. Get an application from the light company. They all have applications for services. Get an application for services. Every service you have, electric service, gas service, doesn't matter what your service is. I don't care if you have solar that you had put on your home. Get the application for installing solar on your home. Get another application. Fill that junk out. Do it honestly. Do it fairly. I would suggest, and this is my suggestion, you contact the Federal Reserve. Do a FOIA request. Say, I need to know how, as a banking institution, as defined in law, I can operate under 412 in receiving Federal Reserve notes by tendering the promissory note along with the application to your agency. I need to know where the application is for your agency. I need to know where the rules are and the regulations for such. And I need you to tell me specifically where this information is. I don't want you giving me a general answer because I don't want to have to go looking through the entire code. I need the information provided with specificity because the statute says I must comply with Federal Reserve Bank regulations. So I need those regulations. Do it for your request. Don't be in a rush to do this. Do it for your request. Yeah, I know they're going to get pissed off. They're, they're, they're changing the money system anyway. So you might as well get grandfathered in and get rid of all your bills. Pay for the year. Don't pay for the lifetime. Pay for the year. Pay a year in advance. Ask them for a year in advance because you're going to do this every year. You're going to do it every year. Do not try to do it two, five, ten years. Do not do that. You can only pay for your necessities. You don't know what you're going to need next year. You can only pay for your necessities. Remember, that was the deal. It was the new deal. Government will take care of your necessities. Car bill, gas bill, light bill, phone bill. Stop struggling every month. Stop stressing about how you're going to pay for this and pay for that. Y'all really need to understand. Go and read section 412. Let's pull it up. Let's pull it up. And then this video shouldn't be more than 30 minutes. Uh, the last one was an hour because it was a lot of information. This one, I'm trying to get direct, directly to the point.
pay your bills, people. Well, I was doing the 1099 process. Why do you need to do the 1099 process when I gave you the code? The 1099 process is a tax form. Now, maybe it works, maybe it doesn't work. Give me a second. Let me see where it is. It's the viable one. Valid and viable. I think it's this one. I believe it is this one. There it is right there. Second 412. Pay attention. Any Federal Reserve Bank, so that just means any bank, that includes you, may make application to the local Federal Reserve agent. You want a home? Stop going through a realtor. Go directly to the bank and say, I need an application for a loan. They're going to ask you all kinds of questions. No, I don't want to go through financing. I just need the application. Would you please provide me a copy of the application? They cannot refuse you. Now, what are the rules for applying Title 12, Section 412 of the Federal Reserve Act, codified? Ask them. And if they refuse to tell you, report them to the CFPB. The Consumer Financial Protection Bureau. Record the conversation. Report them for interfering with your access because the code and Presidential Proclamation 2039 says anyone who interferes with the carrying anyone carrying out the orders of the president shall be liable and placed in prison. That's the information you bring against them. But we, we're not finished yet. I'm make an application to Federal Reserve agent for such an amount of Federal Reserve notes. So you need an application to get Federal Reserve notes. You need an application to get Federal Reserve notes. You need an application to get Federal Reserve notes. Okay. Provided for as it may require. Such application shall be accompanied with a tender. The application needs to be accompanied with a tender. What is tender? Love me, tender. Love. No, tenderoni. When you find a tenderoni, that is right for you. Make it official. Give me love. My heart loves a tender. No, not that type of tender. No, no, this is a financial tender. Yeah, it's an offer and a settlement. But this tender comes with collateral. And the collateral, how much is the collateral? Well, this collateral is for the full sum of that which is applied for. Pursuant to the application. And the collateral security, which is the tender, because it's the tender of collateral. So the tender is the collateral security. Shall be notes, drafts, bills of exchange, bankers' acceptances, and trade acceptances. Ladies and gentlemen, follow the act. Follow the act. Now ask yourself a question. Has anybody ever brought this to your attention? Paying your bills with this, with the law, with the code? with the so-called Trading with the Enemy Act? Has anybody ever said that? Well, everything is prepaid, everything is not prepaid. Stop thinking you have an exempt account. There is no such thing as an exempt account. You don't have an exempt account. Ladies and gentlemen, you don't have an exempt account because you have to follow procedure. The act says that the treasury was given the authority to issue regulations. The presidential proclamation says the same thing. So stop thinking all you got to do is put some numbers on a piece of paper. I can just do an A for V. This is not about A for V. You're not accepting anything for value. You're looking at the UCC on the acceptance for value. Sit up here and do the mother application and put a stupid promissory note together. That's why you guys are not having success because you're not asking them for the regulation. You're not following the law. No, you don't believe me. Just go ahead and read 12 USC 412 and see if it doesn't say what I what I said it said. This is a copy. I, I didn't even copy the whole thing. I stopped right here as acquired. Y'all go ahead. Go ahead. And see. Oh, and by the way, when you do it, document it. Document your accounting. Here's the thing. You want to document that this is for a necessity. You want to put together some sort of a short statement that this is for a necessity and you need to document the necessity. You need to document the reason why you need it. You shouldn't have to tell somebody what, that what you need, but document the reason why you need it. And then look, ladies and gentlemen, if they don't follow through, you can do what's known as a notary presentment to the comptroller of the currency. SACOM is going to start doing things like that for people. 
but you can do that under the 1864 Act of Banking. So the Banking Act of 1864 says that you can do a notary presentment to the Comptroller of the Currency to do an investigation on the bank not following their policies. Don't believe me? Go ahead and read it. Like I told you, they don't piss me off. All right, so that's your 10 minutes of fame, ladies and gentlemen. That's your 10 minutes of information. Let me tell you what's been happening. I use voice recognition software, and I stay connected to the Internet like I'm connected now. And by being connected to the Internet, the algorithm can pinpoint my voice. Fidelity decided after I was telling people I had a Fidelity account online, I actually mentioned it on a video, telling people I had a Fidelity account, Fidelity decided we're going to shut your account down. What, I can't say I have a Fidelity account? That's like saying I have a Bank of America account. What do you mean I can't say I have an account? Yep, they said they were verifying the account and we're going to hold on to the monies in the account until I prove where I got them from. Excuse me? So they want to play. See, I didn't realize it at first. It, it, it didn't dawn on me at first. I couldn't figure out why are they doing that. Ladies and gentlemen, that's a distraction. I'm getting ready to bring charges against judges for all of the stupid stuff they've been doing because I have the laws and I have the procedures for doing so. Criminal charges. Bring a criminal charge against a judge. That judge can't sit no more. He got to go cry. Collect his pension and cry. Until the charge is removed. <sighs> By information, go read the Fifth Amendment. Indictment or information. So put an affidavit statement together. Call it a statement of information of criminal conduct and or behavior. Or you can pull up, go down to the police station or go down to wherever you have to go, the court, and tell them, where do you guys keep copies of information that have been filed as criminal complaints? And pull one and follow the format, people. Somebody want to go into business helping people do that? I promise you how you do that there, but you got to bring legitimate charges. You got to document legitimate crimes under the statute. You can use statutes because that's the code that gets them. Oh, by the way, the tie that binds, they're bound by that code too. That's why a judge cannot remain seated on a bench as a judge while there's a pending indictment or a pending information, pending charge. Go ahead and do the research. But as I said, their job was to distract me. Distract me. Keep me off balance. Keep me off balance. Now, why would they do that? Why would they do that? It doesn't make any sense. Why would they want to keep me off balance? So I don't finish what I'm doing. Ladies and gentlemen, I've been trying to help one person with a lawsuit, and I'm glad I didn't because... That lets me go at the angle I'm about to go at with mortgages. And I promise you, I wish somebody could have come up with this before me. And maybe somebody did, but I ain't seen it done. I guarantee you with all my heart, I ain't seen it done. But I'm not going to say it out loud to you guys. Because I'm tired of people interfering. We're doing this for people. Other people are doing it for themselves and to make a buck. Okay? I just need to pay the staff members. I'm not trying to make a buck. Don't you guys understand? I have more than enough credits to get on with my life. I don't need and I don't want and I'm not looking to try to get rich. I'm one of Jehovah's Witnesses. I don't need to get rich. As I told all of you, my father is a very rich person and he takes care of me. I don't need to go out there and get rich. I already have everything I need. As I told you, my fleshly father, who passed away when I was 15, that man put me through understanding whether or not I needed or wanted something. That's what he did. And when he did that, he did his job. Because ever since then, I ain't got the most expensive stuff. Nothing in my home is brand new. New is a brand, people. New is not a reality. There's no such thing as a new car. There's no such thing. New is a brand. 
Solomon told you y'all didn't pay attention. There is nothing new under the sun. Nobody listened to the man. They didn't get it. You don't even understand where the phrase brand new came from. 1940s, Cadillac, one of the first ones to come up with that brand. They were putting together these cars, and the cars were all one color. Black, just black. Every car was black. Model T is black. Go ahead and see if you see a Model T that wasn't black in that period. All the cars, they decided they were just going to paint them black, like the White House. We're going to paint the White House black anyway. Ladies and gentlemen, Cadillac decided it was going to come up with different color paints on their cars not just black and every year they were going to add something more shiny to it brass and chrome and they were going to make it look like it was better and they branded it new i.e brand new new is a brand new is not a condition there is nothing new under the sun everything on that car is recycled it's garbage it's somebody else's trash that they took and brought together to create that piece of junk vehicle. That's why they don't last, ladies and gentlemen. That's why they're always breaking down. Look at Tesla. People are spending all that money for that piece of junk. You heard me. Look at all the recalls they've had. Look at all the people who bought the Teslas a couple of years ago and the back window leaked. They got water all in their trunk and smelling that carpet and stuff that has mildewed and Lord have mercy. You think I wouldn't have been, man, Tesla would have, they would have been owing a whole lot of money to me. They would have been giving me a new car. So stop going for the shiny stuff, ladies and gentlemen. They do that for children. Okay, here, don't you want this? You want this? Okay, go that way. Ah, okay, psych. Stop doing that, people. Stop looking at it, thinking that because it's shiny, how many of you guys got electronics that you went and bought and you were one of the first ones to buy it? Where is it at? Isn't it a paperweight now? Didn't you give it away to somebody? That's what I'm trying to say, people. So, there's no new. Well, anyway, before I get off of this, because I went a little bit over 30 minutes, ladies and gentlemen, the system is distracting, trying to distract me from talking to you guys. I mean, all kind of stuff is coming up to keep me from giving you guys information. And the more they try to distract me and interfere, because look, I have retrograde amnesia and aphasia. So I get distracted really. Oh man, I listened to your video. <laughs> Lord, mother, you ain't said nothing. I didn't see how this. Oh, uh, shut up. Well, 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 why I got it? Oh, up my, okay, I don't want that up my, okay, uh, but but shouldn't that hurt your foot if you still told, okay, I'm sorry. <sighs> so, ladies and gentlemen, all I can tell you is this, go on YouTube and see if you heard anybody talking about tax credits before me, go ahead, I dare you, go on YouTube, you may have heard people talking about the Trading with the Enemy Act, because everybody knew about the Trading with the Enemy Act, but see if they're pointing out this section the way I've been pointing it out to you. And then put what I just told you to the test. Do a FOIA request to the Federal Reserve. Have them tell you how to apply for Federal Reserve notes, and then start applying. Ladies and gentlemen, the application and the collateral security. People say, well, we're supposed to give that to the Treasury in our state. Ladies and gentlemen, if that's who you have to give it to, that's who you give it to. The, the treasury is a bank. So the state treasurer is a bank. So if you have to process your bills to the state treasurer, look, I can't tell y'all because I don't know what their regulations are. I haven't done that. Why? Because I'm too busy doing too many other things. If I were to take the time to focus on me, then you guys wouldn't get this information. But I am not selfish. Not in everything. I am selfish in certain things. No, I am not selfish. I try not to look out for my own interests. I try to look out for the interests of others. That's not a joke. That's not me trying to be all holy and all this stuff. No, that's me telling you the truth. That's why my God knows who I am. You see, he knows my heart. I don't have to be fake 
with him. <laughs> but you have to be fake with us, huh? You better believe I have to be fake with you. You know how many times I have to hold my tongue? Mother, I done bit my tongue so much that it don't even exist anymore. Leave me alone. I apologize, ladies and gentlemen. So, you got a bill, application, promissory note. Send it. Honey, you send me. And send them the code and tell them exactly what you're doing. If they send it back to you, that's a good thing, ladies and gentlemen, because now you get to send it to the comptroller of the currency. The banks must comply with the Federal Reserve Act. You guys need to know the F, the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau is there for situations just like this. Someone sent me that the CFPB is doing a... Um, it's called an interim uh, bill, interim law, where they're talking about how individuals get to apply for forbearance and everything. Ladies and gentlemen, I would, if I was you guys, I would do a public comment. I would ask them about this right here, Section 412. I mean, it is the code. It is the law that they follow. So how come they're not following it? How come they're ignoring this law when it comes to you and me? How come the courts are ignoring this law? Because you guys are going in there with all this junk that you're getting off YouTube and you don't realize it's the courts who's putting most of that junk out there to distract you, point you in a different direction. That's their game. Well, it wasn't until this night, as I'm talking with my God, that I realized that's what they've been doing to me. Distraction. Well, now they got a deal. Because now, now that people understand, they can pay their bills now. Some of you will be successful, some of you won't. That's why I said you have to contact them and ask them what their regulation is for paying your bill what a promissory note and the application. Because you didn't do it initially. You sent them money, but you, you created the account over the telephone. Well, ladies and gentlemen, they did the application, but they did it on computer. So get the physical copy of the application and you fill it out. Get it notarized if you have to. And then do an affidavit or a cover sheet saying exactly what you're doing it for. And then send it to your state treasurer and tell them what you're doing it for. And then if the state treasurer don't handle it, do yourself a favor. Send it to the national treasurer saying, hey, this is uh, Title 12, Section 412, U.S. Code. Uh, how come y'all not following the law? And then if the treasury doesn't follow the law, then you file a complaint with the Attorney General's Office for your state and the United States against both treasurers. Look, ladies and gentlemen, y'all have got to start speaking up and fighting. You can't just lay over because somebody didn't accept your document. Now, hold on. The people who are telling you to do the 1099s that you can get this and get that, they're not showing you any law that says you can do that. Go ahead. Go back and look at all the videos of anybody talking about a 1099. And look, when did they show you a law? Go ahead. No, I will wait. I will sit up here and wait for you to show me one person who's telling you to do a 1099 that showed you a law of why you get to do it and what it's supposed to do when you do it. What you all didn't understand, the 1099 process also included a OID and an A and possibly at least two other forms. If you're going to hand them the 1099, the 1096, the 1098, and the 1099 needed to be taken care of. So stop doing all of these so-called, oh, there's this new process. Stop doing that, ladies and gentlemen. Process is what people do to hair. Okay, stop doing processes. Call them and ask them what the regulations are. You see here that you get to apply for Federal Reserve notes. All you need is a bill of exchange or a promissory note. I'm going to suggest you do a bill of exchange. Remember, it has to be specific. You don't need the signature of the bank. You don't need the signature of the homeowner. It has to be specific. Now, ladies and gentlemen, the total amount that's applied for, you cannot apply for $10 million when the house is market valued at $300,000. Some of you are going to be stupid. And you're going to do stupid things like that. And you're going to mess it up for yourself. They can't change this law. But they'll do is they'll change the regulation. They'll make the hurdle a little bit higher. 
So that's why I said, ladies and gentlemen, go ahead and do a FOIA request first. Do it based on the, the way I gave you the information earlier and see what happens. Now look, I know, I know that this will work. Why? Because it tells you right here that it will. <laughs> I didn't say it will work. They said it. See, such application shall be accompanied by tender. Just that simple. Follow the law. Follow the law. That's why it will work. But call them and ask them, what's your regulations on this? I got the federal act. You guys, it's on our website and it's under uh, the New Deal. That's the document. It's called The New Deal. So go to our website, download it. It has all of the information you need to back up and prove your point. I'd say listen to it over and over and over again. Go to the points that are highlighted in yellow. Read it until you understand it. Now you can open and close your mouth. Now you can go in court. And now nobody can defeat you. Look, I know you guys, especially those of you who are old timers, who have been listening to me since 2011, 2010. Yes, there's some of these people out there that's been listening to me for that long. You see, every time they come after me, I haven't gone any place. I've come right back. Other people, they've come after them, and you don't hear from them anymore. Or very seldom do you hear from them. I'm upping the ante. Why? Because as I said, this time I'm not going to be silent. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I got to let y'all go because right now I'm getting a little dizzy because I'm that tired. Been up and up and up. And three more hours, no, four more hours, it will be 24 hours of no sleep. So I got to get some sleep because I haven't been getting any. So y'all take care, and there'll be more information coming. Like I said, they keep messing with me. I'm going to keep giving you guys what they don't want you to have. Man, if you if you had given me this information years ago, I would already... I know, but I've been pointing you guys in the right direction. So you can lead a horse to water, but you can't force him to drink. I've been leading y'all where y'all need to go. Y'all just ain't been taking the time to realize that's where y'all need to go. Okay. I would like to ask the gentleman right in the connection, is there any gold reserves to be held as security back of the new Federal Reserve Bank notes? No, ladies and gentlemen. No actual gold reserves. Again, they changed the definition of gold. Oops. That's all they're saying right here. See, it says, this contemplates a substantial addition to it. It is liberatization of the currency issue. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, all they did was, we're going to back it up, and y'all do not understand. That's how they get to issue those bonds, those T-bills. It's based on you guys' notes. They're government obligations. The reason why, look, I'm going to tell you this, and you guys just got to do the math. I, Yeah, I'm going to get in a lot of trouble for what I'm about to say, but I'm going to say it anyway. Ladies and gentlemen, the Treasury and its selling of T-bills and its other bonds is because you people haven't discharged your debt. And so as long as it's outstanding, they can leverage it. Debt is currency. Because you guys haven't been following the system, doing it the correct way, and you haven't been coming back and canceling out the debt, then they create these bonds and these bills based on your junk. Remember, it's a government obligation. Well, the government obligation is what a T-bill is. Go ahead and look at the rules as what government obligations are. You'll see bonds, securities of the Treasury. Well, pay attention, ladies and gentlemen, because you're not hearing me. The Federal Reserve Act, obligations, notes, drafts, bills of exchange, bank acceptance, trade acceptances that are deposited as the security. They're government obligations, ladies and gentlemen. You don't believe me? Contract obligation of the United States. They're government obligations. It's you all's fault. Why? Because you didn't realize that the more paper you put out there, the more they were going to turn them into securities. What do you think SATCOM does? Security Acquisition Trust Commission. We took paperwork and converted them to securities. Then we gave them back to you. Then we gave you credits to go along with it. We evaluated them. 
So some of you are going to understand what I just said. Sorry, the information I'm giving you today is going to have a definite effect on the economy. They can't help it. Why? Because that's how their treasury bonds, securities, and bills operate. It's by you guys not knowing that you can create promissory notes along with the application and discharge your debt. The companies don't go out of business. They get paid from the treasury. So they don't go out of business. But now that devaluation of the dollar can't devalue it anymore because now debt gets to be offset. Now they're going to have a problem. So there you go. I hope you're happy. Don't say I ain't never gave you nothing. All right, y'all follow the law. Follow the law and go get your Federal Reserve notes. Got to go. Goodbye.